Hi everyone, it's me Marcus and welcome to my Marcus Boys channel. You can subscribe, you've got Instagram in the description box below and you can like this video at the end if you wish. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about my coming out story. I've got one on my emotional channel as well, but I thought I'd do one for my Marcus Boys channel. I'm not going to lie, for a bit more publicity on that channel. And... Uh, to make more, make it more available, my side of things on the search results. Okay, so <clears throat> I knew I was gay when I was around six years old, when I had a crush on Action Man, uh, and. <clears throat> I always knew there was something different about me. In fact, everyone did, but they didn't let on. I guess sometimes people just, they know what they're saying, but they don't want to believe it sometimes. And I know I didn't even want to believe it. So if I didn't want to believe it, then how could I expect other people to want to believe it? <clears throat> but at the same time, you know, you've got to be who you are. And so I was, I was like, I feel like I was um, externally camp. You know, I just was the way I used to run, the way I used to um, carry myself. You know, it was just a stereotypical gay fashion. That's how other people would say it. Anyway, that's not me saying that stereo. that's what a gay person would do, it's what I've experienced other people to think what was that was what was gay. If that makes sense. I'm not even sure that I've, what I've just said makes any sense. Um anyway, um and I kept it hidden for ten years and then I fully realised when I was about 13 that I was gay. Fully realised when I had a crush from Bruno on in a crush on Bruno from Pokemon. Um, and if you look him up, you'll see why. <laughs> I have been known to like a muscular guy. Never been out with one, but a guy can dream, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I can go out with younger or older as long as it's legal of course um, and I I was bullied at school um, when I was 14 and that was just for having my hair the way it was because um, it was like it was the length was like down to there. It was shorter at the front than it was at the back, but I was trying to grow it at the time. And someone said that I never that um that it wasn't a prop a proper hairstyle. That I never had a proper hairstyle, and that was classed as bullying because basically saying that I wasn't okay the way I was and this particular person would also I remember going into changing rooms when I was at school and he'd be there and if I ever even so much as looked in his direction or had to face in his direction for whatever reason he would call me a freak And ever since, I would be terrified to go into changing rooms in case it happened again. Not only that, but I find as well that bullies can have a pack mentality. So, um, basically, this is a bullying video as well. Because this is the bullying that I've faced. I have had fat shaming and I have had homophobia in my life as well. Um... And 
I find that other people would end up joining in as well. Like they would say things like, "Oh, this this staff member is is a gay wanker." I used to hear them saying in the in the playground. They they used to say this. I'm not kidding. They did, and the person who was with that guy would only say it because the other person said it. It was like a peer pressure thing because he wanted to be seen as cool. And I remember later on, someone said to that other person, doesn't it ever bother you what such and such does? And he would just be like, and then, and then the, ta then the uh, staff member would be like, you've got to tell him because later on in life, People aren't going to accept this kind of behaviour. And I think you just shrugged it off. And I think you just wanted to look cool in front of him. You know, not, not grass or snitch. Now, if it was me, I'd be snitching all the way to the bank. Because I... I've been known to be a snitch. <laughs> yes. I'm a grass. If it was me, I, it, it, I'd be straight at the, the teachers. I mean, I was, up until a point, uh, when the bullying would continue, but then he would only be cautioned, or he'd have to make some phony baloney apology. Uh, which never actually meant anything. He would say that he was sorry to my face because a teacher made him, but then he would just revert back to his old ways. And um, I remember there was this one time where he actually kicked my cubicle door down but because I played safe and played by the rules most of the time, so certainly to the best of my ability, I was scared to do anything in self-defence in case I got wrong for it when he was the bully. I mean, it was insane, really. When I look back, I should never have felt like that. Nobody should. And... I would go to PE and if ever I didn't do a sport the correct way I was afraid it might show my weakness not just to the teacher but to him as well and then he'd be saying you're not good enough you're not this you're not that and when you talk down to that way for so long and I mean this went on for four years it just it takes over your brain it it, it really does it 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 messes with your brain and you really start to believe you're not good enough. It's only now that I'm starting to feel like I am good for something. Because a lot of people in my life have talked down to me. Um, I let people in too quickly and they end up, you know, completely destroying me mentally. So it's, you know, it comes at a price. Although with, with him, obviously, I never let him in. I never talked to him at all. Never spoke to him. I wasn't even out as gay and he figured it, he figured it out. And he bullied me for it. And if you did something accidentally, like there was one time, and don't get me wrong, it did feel good <laughs> when it happened. Even though it was an accident, it felt good <laughs> that it happened. But there was one time when I accidentally turned off his computer when he was doing work and he came back and uh, the support assistant I was with at the time said hurry up, hurry up, get that back on, the, get that back on the, turn the computer back on so obviously it just goes to show doesn't it how afraid people have been to um, to express themselves around him even teachers were but again that's a reflection of why they should do more about it because you know the balance is all wrong the student is making the teachers afraid to do anything 
excuse me. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, it just goes to show that there's very little discipline for bullies. Certainly in my experience there has been. Um, and when he came back, he would be saying, Oh, who ran off my computer? It was like, she would then say, it was an accident. And I just sat there saying nothing, hoping he wouldn't figure it out. Because if he did, he probably would have, like, put me up against a wall or something. That, I mean, that's what I pictured in my head. That never happened. Even though he just kicked my cubicle door down. I was scared that something like that might happen. Because, you know, one day it was cubicle, kicking cubicle doors down. Next day, who knows? When you're being bullied, it's the, imp it's the unpredictability and the suspense that is also, you know, that also kills you inside. And yes, this kind of behaviour went on for, for four years. You just never know what he was going to do. You never knew what he was going to do. Uh, then came the coming out stage. Um, so I was, I was 16 when I came out. I was turning 17 in that year. And I said to, I actually chose to tell Dad um, to the song Confide in Me by Kylie Minogue, so I certainly picked my moments. Um, and I was terrified, really terrified. I look back and I think, what were you afraid of? But back then, it was the fear of the unknown. And I think that's always the case when it comes to people coming out. They just fear the unknown. They fear people picking on them. They fear have, you know, being attacked. Things like that. And they fear being bullied. But for me, I mean, I mean looking back, I needn't have feared. I was bullied anyway. You can be bullied whether you're gay, straight, bisexual, whatever your sexuality is, you can be bullied. If you're going to be bullied, you, you're going to be bullied. There's just... So, being in the closet doesn't actually do anything. It's a, a false sense of security. Because to the outside world, you are straight. But every time you fake that, you are killing yourself inside because you're not being who you want to be. So when you do eventually get a partner, it's either they'll be of the opposite sex and you'll not be happy. Or you'll be with someone of the same sex, be happy when you're around them. But when you're out in public, you, you, you can't hold hands because you fear that they might, that people might not be accepting of you. And that's not the right way to live. So basically, there's always going to be hardship whether you come out or not. And that's what we tend to forget as people of the LGBT community is that regardless of coming out or not, this will happen. Bullying happens whether you're out or not. That's what I've discovered. That's what I've learned so far, is that there's no escape. Bullies bully, and they'll figure it out. Or they'll bully, or there'll be another bully who'll bully you from some, for something else. And you are basically fearing the inevitable. You're fearing something you can't prevent. If someone's going to attack you, then they're going to. There's there's no escaping from it. So you may as well enjoy being who you are and live without fear. There is just no point whatsoever. <sighs> yeah. 
you know, and if someone's going to do that to you, then they're just showing you who they are. Horrible people. That's another thing we forget. They're just showing themselves up bit by bit, day after day. They really are. Forgive the, do forgive the dogs howling downstairs. Can't do anything about that. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> you get this all the time. <laughs> What with having a West Highland Terrier and a Labrador. And I feared as well coming out to the rest of my family because to me it seemed like they were all straight orientated and like so it just felt like uh, it was an automatic pressure to be a certain way whether it was at school or at home on round family, people would ask, have you got a girlfriend yet? I'd be like, oh fuck. I mean, I literally just could not stand it. I, I, I really couldn't. And the, even when I was in the taxi on the way home from school, questions like that would be asked to me. And I just, honestly, it felt like inside my self-esteem had been battered. And I actually think that the question is more awkward when you are in the closet. Because when you are out as gay, you can just say it. You can say it and they can take it or leave it. But when you just say no and you don't say that you're gay, people will probably say it. Oh, there's time yet, son. Or things like that. And I'm like... They don't get it. And you feel like you're just lying to yourself. Because you are. You're lying to yourself. Every time that that happens. I used to fear that all the time when I got in the taxi ever since. And it actually kind of put me off going back in. Although I had to. And what I've said was, when one of the uh, staff members from school contacted me was, people should say partner instead of boyfriend or girlfriend. They shouldn't be gender specific when they're asking that, if they're going to ask that question. I mean, not that it's anyone's business anyway. If you're going to tell someone that's, completely up to you but if people are more open about the gender you go out with then other people are going to be more open as well I mean it just takes one person to be more open to ask these questions like an adult to a child or a teenager and it'll just it'll start an open dialogue and open feelings and even decrease bullying. That's my theory anyway. Um, I came out on my 20th birthday two years ago and um, everyone knew but Gran and I was afraid to come out of her at one point because, because she went to church just for that fact. I go on about stereotyping and then, then, then I'm doing exactly the same thing there. <laughs> really. But she was totally accepting. Totally, totally accepting when I rang her on the phone. She, she was completely accept accepting. So, sometimes it's just mind over matter. And then once you've done it, you'll think, what was I worrying for? But I do think that the, the coming out process is stupid. I really do. There's just no two ways about it because 
straight people don't have to come out as straight. So why do we have to come out as gay? You know, or why does anyone have to come out as a sexuality that they are? You should just do it. If it's really that accepted in today's society, then why can't we just do it without all the questions? Like, people used to ask me questions like, Oh, you do know what two men do together, don't you? And I'd be like, yes, I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I do. I know what two men do together. This is what being gay is all about. We already know. Don't question. Don't make us question ourselves. Don't make us doubt ourselves, you know. It's, it's not going to do anything. anyway I hope this video is helpful to you and if you do have any questions then you can send me the questions in the comment section down below and this, my Instagram's in the description box thank you for watching guys and I'll see you again very soon okay take care bye